Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, transforming the way people think and work so their organizations can thrive. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Ross Kimborowski. Ross has been a guest on dozens of podcasts, including the Mixergy podcast. He's founded numerous startups and has mentored hundreds of entrepreneurs. For 13 years prior to founding CrowdSpring, he was a trial attorney focusing on intellectual property, complex commercial disputes, and the internet. Welcome to the Sage Advice Podcast, Ross Kimborowski. Thanks so much, Ed. Happy to be here talking with you and your listeners. Well, first off, why do you do what you do? So I I was always passionate about starting my own thing. uh, And ultimately, what caused me to start CrowdSpring, my first startup back in 2007, uh, was running into a problem for my law firm. I was a partner uh, trying to redesign my law firm's website, and we uh, went through the typical process businesses go through. We sought freelancers or agencies, um, looked at their proposals, picked one we thought was great, and then hated everything they did. And in my frustration, I wanted to find a better way for businesses to buy design services. So logo design, web design, product design. And what I didn't realize at the time, but realized very quickly after was that freelancers and agencies who were providing these design services also had a problem finding clients. And so uh, with CrowdSpring, we ended up solving this two-sided market problem where clients needed to find a cheaper, better, more efficient, uh, better quality way to find good design and freelancers and agencies needed to find a way to find more clients. So it's a passion that originated from me solving my own problem. And today um, I do what I do because we're able to help businesses in a hundred countries and freelancers in every country in the world. Well, let's explore that a little bit. Let's talk about the, the importance of, of branding and good design for small businesses. So design is the X factor for brands. And and if you have a small business, if you have a medium business or a big business, you have a brand. Brand is is everything visual and non-visual about your company. So it's the way you engage with customers. But, But your brand identity is something very specific. Your brand identity is everything visual about your company. It's your business name, it's your logo, it's your website. It's the business cards that you hand out and the marketing materials that you send to people. When people engage with companies, they make very quick judgments about the quality, the reliability, and the trustworthiness of those companies. And and this is true whether you have a, a small business at retail, an online small business, or if you're an accountant trying to sell to businesses, Everybody has an identity. So here's one of the things that most people don't know. We are able to process images 60,000 times faster than we can process words, which means that the visual identity you put together, your logo, creates a very quick response in a person subconsciously, even before they consciously evaluate what your business is about. So at the end of the day, if your design is very poor, if it's generic and doesn't distinguish you from others, People don't trust you. People think that there's probably something odd about your business. So if you're an accountant, for example, providing services and clients look at your branding, your logo, your website, and it looks like 500 other accountants they've seen, it doesn't distinguish itself. They don't think you have something unique to offer. And if you're a business, the same thing happens. The mistake small businesses make is under-investing in design. And the cost of poor design is actually far greater in the mid to long term than investing in good design from the beginning. Yeah, I have a friend of mine, Tim Williams, who does a lot of work with uh, small agencies and stuff. And one of the things that he is fond of saying is that a brand can only stand for one thing and that it really can't be what a lot of, I think, professional firms try to do is say that they are, quote, full service. Like full service means absolutely nothing. What 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 is it that you actually stand for? Well, and it's it's... What you stand for has to connect with what you actually do. So this is one of the important elements of of brand identity and your brand image. A lot of companies believe that what they say about their companies, what they say about themselves is what people will take away. So whether you're a professional service provider, an accountant or a lawyer or a business, whatever you publish on your website, you hope people will read and say, yes, that's them. The problem with brand image is it's not what you say 
It's actually what people perceive that's important. So if you call yourself a full service firm, but people don't believe you, you're not going to be able to persuade anybody. And so you need to do the kinds of things that would demonstrate it. So if you call yourself a full service agency, for example, that offers design services, your design better be good. Uh, it better be sharp. It better be custom and unique. Otherwise, people will look at it and say, there's no way these people are credible. I don't trust them. And that's where, where things start falling apart, particularly for young businesses who shoot themselves in the foot by underinvesting in design. They ultimately have a hard time growing their businesses and getting trust from their target market and then struggling to understand why their marketing campaigns are failing one after another. Now, there are lots of reasons for that, obviously, but one very important reason that we've seen this in tens of thousands of businesses over the years is poor design. And historically, the reason for that is design was expensive and, and can still be expensive. So entrepreneurs used to spend tens of thousands of dollars on logo design and, and tens of thousands of dollars on websites. And it's one of the reasons we wanted to change the, how these services were provided. So logo design on CrowdSpring starts at $299, including all fees. It's 10 times less than the market and you get full custom design. So there's really no reason today why a small business can't properly invest in design. Why an accountant who's providing services to businesses shouldn't have a strong, unique brand identity. Because it's one thing to say, I'm a great accountant. I use great software. It's another thing to actually look the part. And unfortunately, people look to see whether your image corresponds to what you say. Yeah. And Fiverr just isn't going to cut it. Not <laughs> well, F Fiverr isn't going to cut it for, for businesses. Fiverr doesn't give you custom design. So it's great for many things. Uh, for example, I needed an intro and outro for a video series I was doing and Fiverr was a great solution for that because it was, it was somewhat unique, but it was a tiny little piece. It wasn't my core brand identity, but for a logo design, if you want something that makes you look like a thousand other businesses, Fiverr is perfectly fine. But when you struggle to grow your business and you try to figure out why people aren't trusting you, one of the reasons is your logo looks like a thousand other businesses they see online. Your website is a template that looks like everybody else's. And so there's nothing unique about you. People want unique brands. So 90% of people buy products based on the authenticity of the brand. And if your brand isn't unique, then you lose. And Ross, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? So I don't have a standard definition of heroes, much like I don't have a standard definition of mentors. Um, I find heroes daily. Um, a hero isn't necessarily for me a person that's revered in the world or has done something great. Um, at any moment in time, it could be my parents, it could be somebody like Bill Gates, or it could be a normal person I see on the train who does something good for somebody else. And I think that's an important way for us to learn because I learn from all of these situations. And in that moment in time, that person helped me become a better person. So I consider them my hero. It doesn't mean that they are my hero for eternity because unfortunately, even people we consider heroes are not always perfect people. And so I don't ascribe to the notion that there's one perfect person or a couple of perfect people in the world. I think we can find heroes in many different places. And lastly, Ross, how can somebody contact you? So crowdspring.com uh, on our site, C-R-O-W-D-S-P-R-I-N-G. Um, on Twitter, I am at Ross Kimbarovsky, uh, R-O-S-S-K-I-M-B-A-R-O-V-S-K-Y, or at Crowdspring. You can find us there as well. Uh, we also have a great uh, award-winning marketing blog for small businesses, uh, crowdspring.com slash blog. All right. Ross Kimbarovsky, founder of Crowdspring. Thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Advice Podcast. Thank you. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.